Hi, it's Susan Proper, coming to you with the gift of stillness on Wednesday evening. Thanks for being here. Um, last week, we, no, two weeks ago, sorry, we focused on uh, releasing fears and uh, talked about that. Um, we, I did a crystal grid uh, that I uh, showed you and uh, that was here until actually very late this afternoon when I created another crystal grid for tonight's topic. Um, we talked a little bit about oils and we're gonna do the same this week. Uh, this week's grid is courage, however. Uh, when we release fears, <laughs> we want those fears to be replaced with courage. We want to find courage and um, fill our bodies with courage, fill our mind and our soul and our spirit uh, with courage. So I created a crystal grid this week. Let's see if I can get that there so you can see that, um, which I have here in my little studio. Uh, and I will have this here for the next two weeks. Um, <clears throat> and this grid is designed to inspire, hi Margaret, to inspire and uh, reach out to the universe for courage for us. Now this uh, crystal grid relies heavily on carnelian and carnelian is a stone or crystal. People use those words interchangeably. Uh, that gives courage and actually uh, carnelian, I'm just going to pick this up real quick. Carnelian, this is our, our center stone in the, uh, the grid, uh, is a stone or crystal that actually cleanses other crystal. It's a very powerful stone. Uh, and um, so this is used very often for giving courage. It uh, increases life force and vitality, has a lot of energy. It's really um, good for uh, releasing negative energy from you, from your system, from your body, uh, helping you to, uh, to condition that out of your system and out of your, your thought processes and your, um, you know how you get into that pattern of negative thinking and negative self-talk? This is the stone that you want to help you get out of that carnelian. Also in the, uh, the crystal grid, I'll show you that um, again here real quick, if you didn't see it, is aquamarine. Aquamarine, again, for courage, it reduces stress, um, more breakage of those self-defeating thoughts. Um, it, it releases all of that pent-up energy and stress. It helps you um, find self-expression. It's, um, let's see, this is the aquamarine. Now this is, of course, raw stone, but this is uh, aquamarine. And then bloodstone. And bloodstone has little, this doesn't really show it too well, but bloodstone has little flecks of uh, orange or brown, reddish tones in it sometimes. I don't have one here that shows that too well. Let's see. I don't know. Yeah, this one shows it. I think you can see it here on this particular piece. Okay. Um, very powerful also courage this is all about courage this is a, a really powerful healing stone as well Let me put that back where i found it um it calms your mind it dispels confusion uh it is a very powerful healing stone so those are the three primary stones in this crystal grid carnelian aquamarine and bloodstone and then clear quartz always clear quartz. Clear quartz is like the most powerful healing um, energy amplifier that there is on the face of the earth. I mean, that's just a fact. And it's because of the way the crystal is formed. It's, it's like a spiral um, crystal. It's the formation of the crystal. Uh, they use crist, uh, quartz crystal in so many things, watches, uh, the spaceships that go to the moon and out into Mars. It, quartz is just a powerful, powerful qu crystal, and there's so much that can be done with it. 
Um, and when you put crystal into a grid, it just magnifies and amplifies the power of the other crystals that already are there in your grid. So here we have um, tumbled crystal uh, quartz, clear quartz, and then the, uh, the points as well. So those are our magnifiers for the other crystals. So that'll be here all week with the, the set intention to help us find courage now that we have uh, spent the last two weeks uh, working on releasing our fears. And then last week I also, or two weeks ago, I also talked about some oils that uh, not only work well with these, these particular uh, crystals for, um, uh, well, last time it was for releasing fears, but this time I want to talk about courage. Cedar wood, really good for uh, courage. Bergamot, this one you might know, the fragrance very... Uh, Familiar to you, Earl Grey tea, that's the fragrance. It's a citrus. Lavender, a master oil. So good for just about anything. Uh, frankincense, also a master oil. Clary sage. And valor, again, a great oil. This one you put on the bottom of your feet at night before you go to bed. Really a powerful um, healer for you. Now, um, I want to recommend a really good uh, rollerball blend that you can uh, make with some of these oils. Geranium is another one. That's right, geranium. Forgot that one. Sorry. Um, you can use nine drops of the bergamot, the bergamot, depending upon how you pronounce it. Twelve drops of the clary sage. I have that here somewhere. Here it is. Uh, Twelve drops of frankincense. I have my bottle downstairs. Sorry. Um, <clears throat> and 12 drops of geranium. And then you add your carrier oil, excuse me, and that's like in a little 15 millimeter, milliliter, milliliter, excuse me, uh, rollerball bottle, glass rollerball bottle. And you just add your carrier oil, whatever that may be, whether it's almond oil, avocado oil, coconut oil, whatever oil that you prefer. Uh, put your rollerball top on, on it, Actually, it's best to do this. When you're blending, it's best to do this. Not shake, do this. And then turn it upside down and then do this again, okay? And then you have a great uh, blend that you can use anytime, just stick it in your purse, stick it in your pocket, whatever, uh, that you can put on your wrist, put on the back of your neck, put in your temples, put anywhere where you need a quick, fragrance, a quick dash of courage. It's really a wonderful blend, smells great. Uh, and that citrus fragrance for the bergamot, oh, I just love it, absolutely love it. It's one of my favorites. So again, nine drops of the bergamot, 12 of the clary sage, 12 of the fra uh, frankincense, and 12 of the geranium. Geranium smells wonderful too. And then your carrier oil in one of those little 15 uh, milliliter rollerball bottles. And use glass, okay? And if you can find a dark colored glass, that's best for essential oils versus a clear uh, bottle. All right, so courage. We're talking about courage this week. So one of the things that um, I learned <laughs> or relearned over the last two weeks um, was that I'm only human. And I tend to be one of these people, I don't know about you, but I tend to be one of these people that is um, a bit of a perfectionist. And when when you have that in your personality, you, you are, um, you're a procrastinator number one. Number two, you, you think a lot about what other people think about what you're doing, uh, about maybe about mm, your house or your, the way you look or, or anything. It can be anything. Uh, but you think about what other people think. And so sometimes these things um, snowball. Yeah, they snowball. And for me, they snowball. 
my procrastination is especially a big one for me. <laughs> um, but <clears throat> what I have found over the years is that um, because I tend to be a perfectionist, um, I don't want to disappoint and I don't want to be judged. Um, so I tend to uh, put off or go overboard or um, put myself under undue pressure. Yeah. And because I do that, and because I'm human, I make mistakes. Um, I overcommit, I miss deadlines, I do the wrong thing, I just make mistakes, I fail. Uh, it doesn't mean I'm a failure, but I fail sometimes. And what happens is that um, it's very easy whether you're a procrastinator or whether you're a people pleaser or whether you are uh, somebody who just has other kinds of issues going on that you tend to hold a lot of things, myself included, inside and let these things just fester and fester and, and um, sometimes they affect the way you live. And the way you deal in your job or your relationships and your family life and whatever it may be. <clears throat> and that's what I talked about last week as far as like, let's let that crap go. Let it go. Admit it. You know, there's, there's, there's no way that you can get back what already happened. But face it, admit it, and let's just let it go. Okay? And I know it's like, okay, that sounds so easy. But what we have to do is we have to remember that it's holding us in. It's holding us in a fence. It's keeping us from doing what we really want to do in our life. And it's keeping us from being happy and maybe who we really are. And from being joyful and from being authentic. And so what I talked about last time was opening up the fence, opening up the gate and maybe sticking your toe out, sticking your foot out. And that's being brave. That's finding courage. And that's taking action. So, you know, when you stick your foot out and you take a step and you maybe make a mistake, you have to stick you have to remember you're human and you make mistakes and you're going to learn from those mistakes. And you have to say, oh, I made a mistake and now I have to go back in my fence. No, you, you still say, oh, I made a mistake. I'm human, but I'm going to learn from it. And what you have to remember is that just because you're doing something your way, and maybe you did make a mistake, maybe you didn't, but you're doing something your way. Don't compare yourself to the way somebody else is doing, or the way anybody else is doing something. Compare yourself only to yourself. You are on your path, they're on their path, he's on his path, she's on her path, you're only on your path. And if what you're doing in your life doesn't look the same as anybody else's, that doesn't matter. What matters is that you're living your life authentically and the way that makes your heart happy and the way that you want to live. And that takes courage. Yes, it does. It takes courage. But until you step your foot, your toe, whatever, outside of that fence when you open the gate, you can't even experience your authentic self because you're holding it all inside that gate where your fears are from stepping out. So you need to take the step and take action. And action is opening the gate, stepping out, accepting the fact that you're human. You're going to make mistakes. Not everybody's going to like it, but it's your life and you have to live it your way authentically for yourself. And hopefully with some meditation, some crystals, some oils, and some deep soul searching, you will be able to do that.
I'm not going to say it's easy because I know on my own journey, I've had my ups and downs, but I know it's possible because I stuck my foot out of the gate and you know, you just don't look back. You just keep going. You just keep going. And so that is my wish for you, that you just keep going. Take your, take your hand, open the gate, stick your foot out and walk. Walk, keep going, walk. Live your life authentically and just walk. Be courageous. Now, with that being said, we are going to do a yin practice. We're gonna start with some breath work and we are gonna do a yin practice that focuses on courage and stepping out. Um, <clears throat> but I do want to just say one thing, and that is always remember um, any time that you have a question or you feel like reaching out to me during the practice tonight or after the practice, please always you, you feel free to message me or email me. And if you want to carry the conversation on further, I'm happy to do so. If you have any questions about the crystals or the oils or the grid, I'm happy to talk about that as well. So just always remember that wherever you're from, okay? All right, so we are going to start with relaxing breath. And for you, those of you who have been with me before, um, this is a breath that um, helps you in times of stress or, um, yeah, stress, or times when maybe you are faced with a fear and you just need to calm your body down and your mind down. So I'm gonna move back to my mat and we will get started. So if you have your mat ready and maybe a pillow or two for uh, when we get into the in practice, that would be great. Now also for those of you who may not be familiar with uh, yin yoga, uh, Yin yoga as opposed to yang yoga is a more meditative yoga practice. We are primarily on our mat and uh, rather than working uh, the muscles as we do in yang yoga, we are working more of the deep tissue. We're working uh, the tendons, the ligaments, fascia, the joints. And what that means is that we are in a pose, uh, holding that pose still uh, for a relatively longer period of time, anywhere from three to five minutes. And uh, we do that because generally speaking, in order to um, work those deep tissues, we need to hold the poses longer. And, um, while you are in the pose, if you are experiencing any pain, any zinging, electrical, any kind of serious pain of any sort, then you come out of that pose. However, this is not, um, this is not uh, the kind of yoga where you're just coming in and you're looking to find a comfy, cozy, uh, relaxation situation here you definitely want sensation I am trying to work uh, your tissues so you know we're, when you come into a pose I want you to feel something okay uh, we're gonna start off with some breath work and this is called relaxing breath so let me just explain it real quick you inhale to the count of four through your nose and then you exhale through your mouth but first what we're gonna do is inhale four through the nose. We're gonna hold the breath to the count of seven. And then we're gonna exhale to the count of eight through the mouth. And um, when you do this, you hold your tongue up on the roof of your mouth behind your two front teeth. And if you want me to demonstrate that, I'm happy to do so. So you can just watch me the first time. I'm gonna inhale I'm going to explain it as I go so it won't be perfect but even though I'm a perfectionist so I'm going to inhale with the tongue and the roof of my mouth through my nose and then I'm going to hold for seven tongue still in place and 
And now I'm going to exhale with the tongue still in place, but my mouth open. And that was to a count of eight. So it makes sort of a whistling, hissing sound when you exhale, okay? So we're gonna do this 10 times. And that's all we're gonna do is 10 times because it is a little, um, well, it, sometimes people have a little bit of a dizzy reaction to it if they do it more than 10 times. It takes practice. After you've done it for maybe a month, um, you can uh, work your way up beyond 10. But, but for starters, try 10 times, all right? So here we go. Inhale four. Hold for seven. Exhale, eight. You can do this at your own pace. When you're finished, just return to normal breathing and rest for a moment. Remember this breath technique anytime that you're in a stressful situation or you feel like maybe you're having trouble falling asleep or uh, you're just really nervous. Uh, this really works on your central nervous system and helps you to relax. It's a really uh, like an instant relaxer for your, your central nervous system. It's really very, very good way to relax. All right, we're going to start off in child's pose. 
So again, we're, we're in yin. We're in yin tonight. So we, um, we do use props. If you feel that you need props uh, to help you maintain your uh, pose for, we're gonna be in child's pose for about three minutes. So some of you may have blocks, some of you may have um, bolsters or pillows. I try to demonstrate using a pillow because I'm not quite sure what everybody has uh, in their home or wherever you may be. So for child's pose, <clears throat> I'm also gonna to to show with a blanket here. Your knees uh, are mat width apart, your toes are touching in the back, you're sitting on your heels, and then you're gonna come forward. And you can either have a pillow that you're leaning on or lying on, laying on, <laughs> or if you're perfectly comfortable coming all the way down onto the mat with your third eye down, you can do that as well. Some people who have ankle problems can put a blanket underneath the ankles or for extra comfort, you may want a blanket on top of your heels or even a pillow on top of your heels. The, the general idea here though is that you want sensation this is a nice spinal stretch a shoulder stretch and you do want to feel that i don't want you to feel so comfy that you fall asleep all right so i will keep track of the timer and you head on into your child pose If you have your head on a bolster or pillow and it's turned to the side, please turn it the other way.
Okay. Again, if you are using a pillow or a bolster, if you could just gently move that to the side. And then gently push yourself up. Bring yourself to all fours. And then slide yourself down on your belly. And then we're going to bring ourselves into a crawl position. So you're going to bring your right knee up, keeping it bent. Right arm up, elbow bent, left arm down to the side straight, and left leg straight. And now we're going to just switch so the right leg goes long, the right arm goes long, left leg comes up, keeping the knee bent, the right arm comes up, keeping the arm bent. And roll yourself over onto your back. If you have a block, a block is ideal for this next pose. We're going to do supported bridge. If you don't have a block, a pillow is okay. Not as, um, not as good, but it works. <laughs> I'll show you with a pillow. Basically what we're going to do, supported bridge, excuse me, we're going to bring that pillow to our sacrum, knees bent, and we're going to come back onto it. Keeping the knees bent, trying to bring the heels back as close to that pillow as we can. Arms are down by the side. If you have a block, and you can get blocks, I'm always pitching TJ Maxx or Home Goods or someplace like that. You can get these uh, pretty inexpensively. Highly recommend a block for this. You're going to come back into this position. This is called passive rest, by the way, where you just have your knees bent, feet flat on the floor. Arms straight, palms down. This is passive rest. It's really a good thing to do if you're having trouble sleeping or if you just need to relax. You can do this in bed, you can do this on the couch, you can do this on the floor watching TV. All right, so you're in passive rest position and you just lift your hips and put the block underneath your sacrum. Since it's not a pillow, we have to get this positioning a little bit more specific. So you want it right underneath your sacrum, which is those two little indentations right over your rear end. 
your arms still go in the same place and you still want your heels relatively close to that block. Your legs are parallel, feet flat on the floor. You don't want your legs splayed like that, okay? I'm gonna be here for about three minutes. You want your chin tucked to your chest. I will keep track of time. All right, now I want you to take your right leg and stretch it out long. Your foot is resting on the heel. <clears throat> and then the left leg, stretch it out long, rest the foot on the heel. Now relax. Your knees can point out or relax out. They can splay out a little bit. This is a psoas muscle stretch. These are the muscles right here directly over the pelvis. The muscles that don't get stretched a whole lot. They're your fight or flight muscles.
bring your left leg back to passive rest and then your left leg. Carefully and slowly lift your hips just enough to remove the block or the pillow and then bring your hips down. Straighten your legs again and then just rest in Shavasana. And now we're going to roll back over onto our bellies very carefully. I know your hips are probably feeling a little tender right now. Maybe your lower back. And we'll move into Sphinx. So in Yin, Sphinx is not at all a dynamic pose. So when you're in Yang, um, Yoga Sphinx is a pretty dynamic pose. You're, you know, you're up like this, and your your legs are tied, and your abdomen is all tied, and you're holding yourself up. In Yin, you're like this. Everything's relaxed. Everything nice and relaxed. Your shoulder blades almost come together to touch. Your head is relaxed, and it's all like this. What you want to do is you want to feel a nice bend in that lower back. If you want to use a block to rest your head. That's fine. You really want to use those arms to support you. If you find yourself gritting your teeth, having any kind of tension in your toes or fingers, try to release that.
Now gently lower yourself onto your mat. Your arms can be down by your side or you can fold them and rest your head on them. But just find your comfortable relaxation pose. You may even want to just roll your sacrum a little bit and then just rest. From here, we're going to move into a shoulder roll. So you're gonna move on to your left side. My dogs are barking like crazy. I don't know if you can hear that. <laughs> All right, we're gonna move on to our left side and we're going to keep the left arm extended out behind us like an airplane. And we're gonna still roll on to our left side. The palm is down on that left arm. Now your head, if your head gets wonky, you may need a pillow or a block. I personally prefer a blanket, which I think is down here. Yeah, okay. You want to have your head supported. You don't want your head hanging weird. You may not need it but you may. Okay, so the left arm is out behind you, palm down. You're gonna roll up onto that side, your left side. Now, here's where it's a matter of how intense of a, of a stretch you want on that left shoulder. You can keep both your legs long. You're using your right arm as a kickstand to help keep you up on your left side, okay? So you can keep both your legs long. You can bring your right leg uh, bent. Bring the uh, foot flat and the floor knee bent. You can bring the left knee um, up, keeping the leg on the floor, or you can bring both up. This is the most intense twist. You feel it in the torso. You feel it most intensely in the shoulder. Or you can just have one up, or you can have both down. Whatever variation works for you so that you don't hurt your shoulder, yet you feel, you feel that compression and that tension in the shoulder, and you also feel that twist in the torso.
gently roll yourself back down onto your belly. And now we'll switch so that the right arm comes out to your side like an airplane. And then you'll roll yourself up onto the right side using the left arm as a kickstand. And then bring up the left leg or both legs or keep both legs down, whichever works for your shoulder compression and the torsion here. in the abdomen. slowly down onto your belly. And bring your arms down to your sides. And just rest.
we're gonna roll back onto our backs. If you have your pillow, that would be good. If you have two pillows, even better, or a bolster. You uh, wanna purchase your own bolster. Bolsters are easily available on Amazon. Sometimes you can find them at a, um, at a sporting goods store like Dick's or something like that, but I mean, I get mine at, um, at Amazon. They're, they're not terribly expensive to, to buy a bolster. But if you don't have a bolster, two pillows work best. We're gonna do recline butterfly. Uh, so it's good to have something to support your head for this as well, or you can just use um, a blanket if you don't have another pillow. And just use a blanket or something like that. <clears throat> Basically, the first pillow will line up with your sacrum, and then the second pillow is for the top of your spine, shoulders, and, and your head area. So you're going to bring the soles of your feet together. This is to uh, work our inner thigh area, open our heart, if you uh, are looking for a more intense uh, stress or stretch on the inner thigh area, you bring the soles of your feet closer to your uh, groin area. If you need support for your knees, you can use a blanket or blocks if you have them. But basically, you're gonna bring yourself down gently using your elbows making sure your head is okay, and then come down onto your pillows, bring your palms up. Notice how that your chest area opens, your shoulder area open. You want, again, that more intense feeling working in the inner thigh area. You can bring your, your feet closer to your groin area. If you notice that your legs start to shake a little bit, you can just release the feet down lower. I'm gonna be here for about three minutes, maybe four.
carefully use your hands to bring your legs together, keeping your knees bent. And then straighten out your legs. And then roll to the side to bring out the bolster or the pillows, whatever it is that you're using. And then roll back onto your mat and just rest in Shavasana for a moment. Now bring your knees back up, knees bent, feet flat on the floor as if you're in passive rest. And then drop your knees to the left. Bring your arms to goal post and bring your chin to the right. Just be here for a minute for twist Bring your knees and head back to center. Rock back and forth just a little bit on your sacrum. And then drop your knees to the right. Make sure your arms are still goal post and bring your chin to the left.
Now stretch yourself out into full Shavasana. And rest. Take this time to leave behind what no longer serves you. And take this time to focus on finding courage deep within you, deep within your heart space. Step out and take action, always remembering that you are on your own path, your own authentic path. And that even though you may feel that your mistakes are blunders. They're opportunities to learn and grow. And they're part of your journey. They're part of what makes you who you are. And if you get afraid if those fears come back, meditate, use oils, use crystals, use introspection, and think about why are you really afraid? And if you need help, remember that you're not alone. Find somebody that you truly trust and ask them to help you find courage.
take a nice deep breath and sigh it out. Bring your presence back to the room where you are. Take a nice deep stretch, arms overhead, legs long. Hug your knees into your chest, massage your sacrum. And then roll yourself onto your side, resting in a fetal position with your head on your arms. And then gently using your hands and your breath, bring yourself up to a seated position. Let's keep your eyes softly closed with your hands resting gently on your thighs. Let's do one relaxing breath where we count in to inhale to four, hold seven, and exhale eight. Let's do that now. Inhale to four. Take a moment to just check in with your body right now. Are you feeling relaxed? Do you feel energy? Are you tingling? Do you have any sensation anywhere in your arms or your legs? Think about courage for a moment. As it applies to maybe something specific right now that you're facing or that's happening in your life. Maybe something that you heard tonight, whether it's breath work, or a yoga pose or something might be able to just make an inkling of a difference for you. And that's my wish. I hope you leave this practice tonight encouraged to find courage. And I thank you for being with me tonight. And bring your hands to your heart. I wish you peace and I wish you joy. Namaste. Thanks everybody for being here with me tonight. Let me shift myself closer. See who else is here. Hi, Lori. <laughs> um, and Maja, thank you. Um, so 
again, as I mentioned earlier, if there's ever anything that you have a question on that um, I brought up during uh, the session tonight, please feel free to message me or ask me about it. This was our crystal grid tonight for courage, uh, carnelian, aquamarine, uh, bloodstone, and clear quartz. It'll be here all week with the intention that we find courage. Um, so yeah, ask me anything. Uh, I encourage you to find courage. And uh, I thank you for joining me. And uh, I'll be here again in a week, uh, two weeks uh, with another gift of stillness. And I really look forward to being with you. And I so much appreciate you being with me. Thanks. Bye, everybody.